Hello and welcome to part four of our SQL Plus tutorial series. So in this video, we are going to uh, sort of close things off a little bit with a little bit more advanced uh, uh, technique, but I do have to stress uh, more realistic. So in Rack Forms, yes, it is very easy to go in and write to a database. All I have to do is, for example, create a new job, create a page, submit button, confirmation page, right click on my form and say SQL Plus Automator. Right? If I put in a table name and a database name, I can create a table in the SQL Plus logic uh, to, to write to that table. So I could say, for example, sample, and my database name is, I don't know, also sample, and then I just say SQL Plus, and there's my SQL Plus items, right? Never have to actually write database code. And for many uses, that's going to be absolutely perfect. The problem with that is, as we saw with the last video, when it comes to, dare I even say, more real world jobs, there are oftentimes more things that we have to consider, right? We have to be a little bit more cautious about how we're approaching things. So specifically, as we saw in the last video, we ran into a problem with our track table here when I tried to insert a track ID of zero along with an artist and album ID of one. And the reason why we ran into a problem is because that wouldn't actually make sense to insert that. So if we think about our data here, artist and album ID of one means that we're looking at one album for one particular artist. Track zero here means that we're looking at something that already exists, right? This is a, a, a song off of this album by this artist. And so it doesn't actually make sense to overwrite that. That would be a, a terrible way to build databases um, unless we are actually specifically saying, well, yes, we're going to overwrite this. That's not this form. This form just says we're going to insert uh, album item information. And so this database, which I just downloaded from the internet somewhere, essentially enforces data integrity on us, right? We cannot insert bad data into this database. It doesn't mean that we can't break it in some other way, but at least as far as this, it's core function, saving tracks, um, it's doing that beautifully. And so as form developers, this is the type of stuff that we have to think about. In this case, it's kind of being forced on us, right? I got this table from the internet, I have to kind of work around that. But there's no reason why I, if I wasn't building this table, should have also done the exact same thing. And so this video then is about how we deal with that, but also being very, you know, gentle, but cautious and somewhat strong in saying that this is real world stuff right here, right? It is important that we're building things even for ourselves, but especially for clients and our employers, that we're not building something that simply doesn't make sense, right? That can be corrupted easily, etc. So my apologies for the long intro here, but let's actually address this now, or at least start to. I'm not saying this is a perfect solution here, but let's actually start to address this. So to do that, I'm going to load up my music job right here, and I'm going to essentially say my workaround is going to be to look at um, at form runtime, our database, and give the user some some way of asking what the highest track number is for a particular album and artist, and then returning that track number to them. And we're going to do that with an AJAX call. So let's just start building this, and I'll describe it along the way. So I'm going to scroll down here, and I'm going to select an AJAX module. I'm just going to drag it up here. And I'm going to copy and paste in a select statement. And let's take a look at what this thing is doing right here. So remember, the idea is return the highest track number. So to do that, I'm going to say uh, select track ID, so this column right here, from track, this table, where the album and artist ID are 1. So we're actually looking at these uh, values right here. And then here's where the magic comes in. I'm going to order it by track ID in descending order, so highest first, and I'm going to limit it to one result. So the combination of those statements, in particular these last two, mean that I'm going to return the album and artist ID where they're both equal to one, and I'm going to return the highest instance of a track ID, which should be 18. Now, before we can actually test this, it is important to note, of course, that there's a little bit of setup that we have to do with the AJAX module. Um, so we have to uh, make sure its database parameters are, are correct. So we'll do that first. So in this job, I know that I'm using a custom database name. So I am going to, instead of kind of typing this stuff in, I'm just going to go to this guy right here. I know this already has those proper database values. And just as we did in that one video, I'm just going to say apply settings to all data source items. And that's a nice little shortcut here so that my AJAX item now has all those uh, values in there. The other thing we have to do is whenever we work with AJAX is we essentially have to do two main things. The first is we have to say which field we want to watch for changes. And then the second is which field we want to update when a change happens. So in this case, 
I'm going to scroll down in its Ajax options and I can say for watch this field, I'm going to say we're going to watch the lookup track uh, button. It's called track lookup. And I'm going to watch it for an on click event. So when I click this button right here, I'm going to fire off my Ajax event. Now, because this Ajax logic has to go somewhere, I'm going to then further say for its Ajax bindings, I'm going to say I want to select the track ID field and I want to update the track ID field with the track ID value. And again, because we're querying the database here for track ID, um, Rackforms is smart enough to actually kind of run this database query for us and say, ah, track ID is what you're returning in this query. So now that I have that done here, I'm going to try to run this. We're going to run into a problem. I'm doing it on purpose. I'll just show you a brand new feature of Rackforms. So just go ahead and run this here and let's kind of watch what happens. Let me actually turn on uh, a debugging console right here. And so I have two values set here. So let's just hit lookup track. Now we're going to get an Ajax exception, so it's kind of like a generic error message. If I look here at my post though, I can see here that I have a database parameter bind error. So what does that actually mean? Well, what's really cool is um, in previous versions of Rack Forms, um, if I wanted to have an Ajax call, so for example this Ajax basic request here, essentially looks something like this. I'm binding to a field with a value. So this age select right here binds its value 22, 34, and 32. And that magically, I mean that quite literally, magically becomes the first parameter that we pass to our Ajax call, right? So I pass the value of 34, the Ajax call fires and says, ah, here is, now ignore this, this is geolocation information right here. Uh, these are usually names. This will go out and say, find me all the names with an age of 34, right? So that's how the logic usually works. The key here is that I'm, I'm using a form field uh, element with a value. The, the difference here, and the problem why we're getting our little message, is that we're actually using a push button now, right? We're binding to a push button. So essentially what we're saying is we're trying to find a value from our lookup track push button, and it doesn't actually have a valid value that we can use. And so that's where we're getting the error. Now this is where the new feature comes in. I'm really excited about this actually. The idea to fire off an Ajax event from like form fields like this is powerful, but this new feature allows us to actually fire off Ajax events from something like a push button. And the way it actually does that is with this little button right down here. It says ignore first parameter. So as we just kind of discussed, the problem that we had is that we are trying to, uh, we're trying to perform an Ajax query using a value of a push button. And a push button doesn't really have a value for a form field. Because the push button is its first parameter, by saying ignore first parameter, now we actually say, don't worry about this push button. All its job is to do is to just fire off the Ajax query. And so this is our brand new feature, really excited about it. It allows you to now, as we can see here, push a button and fire off an Ajax query. Now that said, of course, we do need to actually bind some kind of value to this for it to make sense. And of course, what we're doing here is we're looking up track ID by album and artist, artist ID. And of course, we have album and artist ID right here. And so with these two fields, now we'll use those two fields in our additional binds right here. So album ID and artist ID. So ignore the first field, but bind these two. Album ID is going to be a parameter passed to this database call. So now that we have that done, uh, we should get no error when we run this database query. And indeed, we don't. We can change this around. And provided we have a different track number for one of these values, we should get a different number in this box. Now, of course, you can see here that I'm, I'm uh, clicking this, but we're always 18. So why is that? Well, that's simply because right now we have hard-coded values uh, in this box. We actually want to change these to be question marks. The question marks simply say, use one of these binds right here. Right? So wherever there's a question mark, it essentially means this is going to be a form field driving this value. So where album ID equals question mark essentially means album ID is actually coming from this field. The linkage happens by saying this bind value is album ID. So with that done, now we should actually be able to get a dynamic value from this. So if I say look up track, that should be 18 again, but this should be a different value, and it is. So awesome. Now the final thing that we need to do is I actually want to uh, increase the track number uh, that we're returning to the user so that's actually a valid value. Right now we're just returning 18 right here, which is correct, that's the highest track number, but that's not a correct value for an insert. 
And so to fix that, all I'm going to do is the simplest possible solution. I'm just going to go my database query. I'm going to say select track ID plus one from track. And now what we're going to do is when we select this from the database, we're going to add one to its value. So now if I select my two values right here, I get 19. So, excuse me, a little bit of water, too much talking there. So basically, uh, this is a good example here of uh, a cool feature in Rack Forms that allows us to do some stuff, but also a, a pretty instructive lesson. And when it comes to real world forms, uh, they are rarely as simple as what um, uh, you might think they should be. And even when we do make them simple, you should almost be suspicious at that point, because maybe if it is that simple, um, we've actually done something wrong. And again, I didn't have to uh, enforce this, uh, these, these keys right here. I, heck, I could have just took it, uh, taken these primary keys out of here. But then we are very much at risk of creating a, a bad, corrupted data set. We certainly don't want to do that. So uh, it's important when we approach jobs like this that, yes, it's easy to create stuff, but for goodness sakes, be careful. Think about what you're doing. And uh, if it requires a little bit more work, well, that's what I'm here for. If you're a Rack Forms user, shoot me a call, send me an email, and I love to talk about this stuff. We will, you know, we'll look at your job and we'll, we'll figure out the right way of doing things. So I shall leave it at that. Hopefully you've enjoyed this series. Uh, we plan on doing many, many more of these uh, in the coming months and years. And so if you have any suggestions, questions, comments, uh, ideas for new videos, please let me know. Uh, phone numbers at the top of the website or info at rackforms.com is how we can be reached. Thank you much.